my name is Suzanne and I garden and grow cut flowers in Devon in the UK and today I thought we'd talk a little bit about germinating seeds um, during cooler weather um, and I think this will be particularly useful for those of you that perhaps don't ac have access to polytunnels or greenhouses. I'm afraid some of the footage in this video will appear to have a sort of black haze around it that is because I um, smashed my iPad up in the middle of the summer. I smashed it up again last week. I took it in to be repaired and the front facing camera is not aligned properly with the hole in the new um, glass, which means I cannot film using the front facing camera because it just leaves this black haze. I apologise about that and I'm hoping that I can try for future videos and um, try and find a way of filming. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of my subscribers, those of you that have been with me for a long time and also welcome all of you that have joined recently. Um, if you haven't subscribed and you do like my videos, please do subscribe and please do give the video a like. Um, small um, content creators like myself, uh, this is a love not money enterprise. This is me doing this because your family just don't understand it. <laughs> the only people who understand this obsession with growing seeds and flowers and making bouquets and bunches is, is you guys. Um, you're, you're what encourages me to make more content um, and I really love your comments. Um, some of you are so generous and kind with your words um, and it really does encourage me to keep going out there, um, rain or shine, and uh, making these videos for you. Um, so thank you so much. It's, it's nearly February, which means we're nearly getting to that magical day in mid-February where we have 10 hours of sunlight. Um, so we're all, well, all growers, I expect you're all the same. We're eagerly awaiting that daylight so we can get sowing some seeds. Um, now, I always find it a little bit more tricky to sow my seeds in mid-February, and that's because I have an unheated greenhouse. Um, so I've tried uh, before to sort of put seeds in there to germinate and although they will germinate they sometimes can take quite some time because they're just waiting for the greenhouse to be the right temperature. For that to happen for me I really need you know a good day of sunshine um, to really bring the temperature up. I know certainly for the next week at least it's going to be really overcast weather um, but perhaps by the time we get into mid-February it will start warming up. The other issue I have with my greenhouse at the moment, um, which is going to be a problem, because even though I tend to start seeds in the house, I then, because I'm limited on space, I do then quickly put them in the greenhouse. But of course, I've got issues with voles and mice in my greenhouse, so we need to get the floor concreted quickly. Otherwise, my house is just going to be a bit like when my house was full of dry flowers in the autumn, it would be full of seed trays everywhere. Um, I don't have a conservatory, so I use my kitchen windowsill. Um, isn't that what they're for, kitchen windowsills, for starting seeds? So I generally use two methods to start seeds in my house, um, and that's mainly because I've always got lots of seeds to start and I can't rely on one method because it's limited space. Um, so the first method I use, which is available um, to anyone really, because I do this on a completely domestic scale, is I have two um, heated propagators, which are um, very simple. They don't have a thermostat or anything like that. They're just a, a seed tray, which is heated from underneath, and it has a cover to keep the moisture in while the seedlings are growing. Um, so I use that to germinate the seeds, but then as soon as they've germinated, I take the tray out of my heated propagator, mainly because I want to get something in germinating, um, but then I put them in another propagator, often still with the lid, because quite often they may still have the seed casings on and the humidity will really help them release those to show their first seed leaves. Um, and as soon as I see their seed leaves, then I uncover them and get some grow lights on them um, nice and low because the grow lights are above them when they've got the cover on but that sometimes isn't quite as close to the seeds as you would like because you don't, really don't want leggy seedlings and you'll find if you've got them in a window they will lean towards the light and the way you can sort of help to solve that problem if you don't have lights because I haven't always had lights is to turn the trays every day but also 
If you get a cardboard box and line it with aluminium foil and sort of put it one side, it will help reflect the daylight off onto the seedlings. Um, and that can be quite effective as well. The, the grow lights I've got are just grow lights that I got on um, online and they were fairly inexpensive. And my heated propagators were just ones that I picked up on Marketplace. So they were used, they were second hand, but they, they both work fine. So then usually I would grow my seedlings on in the house until they get their true leaves. So I wouldn't like to put them in the, out in the greenhouse while they've still got their seeding leaves. So I wait for them to get their true leaves and then put them out there, providing my floor's been concreted. But you might not have that problem. If you haven't got a greenhouse to um, put them out into, you could use a cold frame or you can keep them in the house until you're ready to plant them out. Um, whatever your situation is, there's always a way to start some plants from seed. I remember um, my old property, I lived in a flat and it was an upstairs flat. But every year I started all my seeds under a skylight in the bathroom and I was always amazed how many seeds I could start just under that one single skylight. So where there's a will, there is a way. So generally I use the heated propagators to start um, the smallest um, seeds, so things like snapdragons. Um, generally um, the way it works, not always, but the smaller the seed, they tend to like to be more surface sown and they need light to germinate it. Whereas the bigger the seed, they like the dark to germinate. Like I say, it doesn't work for all seeds, but most things that I grow. So things like your sunflower seeds, which are nice and big, your sweet pea seeds, which are nice and big, things like ranunculus corms, which again are nice and big, they all like darkness. Whereas um, snapdragons and any of the other tiny fiddly seeds generally like to be surface sown. And then all the ones in between, I sort of experiment with every year and I'm not great at keeping records. As long as I germinate them somehow, <laughs> I, I'm happy. That's, that's the result that I want in the end is to have my seeds germinate. So anyway, what I do with the bigger seeds that like the darkness, because I haven't really got room for only having two heated propagators, is I just get um, some Tupperware tubs. Now these are recycled ones. These are the ones that you generally get your takeaways in. Um, you could buy them new if you wanted, um, but to be honest, you could use um, any Tupperware container because it doesn't matter if it's if it's not, it doesn't have to be clear. It just is a way of holding moisture around the seeds. So I take, it, take my plastic container, make sure the lid is tightly fitting. And then you just need some kitchen towel, um, which I just moist. You, you could use warm water, but I always just use cold water. And then you just want to sprinkle your seeds onto your kitchen towel. And then I always put another damp bit of kitchen towel on top of the seeds. Put your label in or label the tub, but make sure you label. And then I use my airing cupboard. But I do know people who have successfully used like the bottom um, drawer of like an arga, as long as it's not too hot, just want to melt the plastic. Um, or just somewhere warm. If you've got a radiator um, somewhere, you could put them near a radiator, but I've got a, a airing cupboard, which has basically got a hot water tank in, and we don't keep our hot water particularly warm. We keep it at about 70 degrees, um, and I find that works really, really well for germination. So on the 21st of January, which was last Sunday, I think, I started and some larkspur and um, two different varieties and some flocks i think four different varieties and bells of island in my airing cupboard and i looked at them yesterday which would have been seven days later because that was sunday again and we had some great germination it is interesting with the flocks because obviously it's the same um type of plant how the different varieties are germinating at very different um, time frames. And I think that's to do with freshness of seed because um, my cherry caramel seeds, which are seeds I had last year, they haven't germinated yet, although I will go and look at those in a minute. Whereas the tapestry seeds, which are fresh seeds that I've only just got, they germinated really, really quickly. So Bells of Ireland, the seed packet did say they put more seeds in it because they didn't think the germination rate would be that high. So 
I probably think that all the ones in there that were going to germinate have germinated by now. So I've potted them on and they are now under lights in the kitchen. Um, the tapestry phlox germinated really well and so did the creme brulee. So I've pricked them out um, of their kitchen roll into compost. And again, they're under grow lights in my kitchen now, just so they get their first set of true leaves and then they can be kicked out somewhere, somewhere mouse and bulb. So when you take your germinated seedling from your kitchen towel, if the seed is still there, that will be the top of your plant. So the leaves will come out of the seed. So I'm just going to use the label to make a little hole and I'm just going to pop each of my germinated seedlings into there. So I'm not going to pop them on any heat, but I'm just going to pop them into my kitchen under grow light. So this is the tapestry. So they were in the air in couple on the 21st of January and today is the 26th, might be the 27th actually. Anyway, I put them in the airing cupboard last Sunday and today is the following Saturday. Um, and they've germinated really well. So here they are. So they're in the compost now. And hopefully now they're going to go under, um, under a, a clear lid just so that they have enough moisture just to pop their seed cases off. Because if they're not kept at the right um, humidity... Um, then they'll find it harder to remove their cases where if it's nice and humid then their cases will come off and then once their seed leaf first seed leaves are showing I will remove the cover from them so they can get air um, and then these are the um, creme brulee over here you can see some of them you can't see them poking out but I have put one in each cell um, so I'll keep you updated on their progress And then the other thing I thought I'd do before I really get seriously into seed sowing is do a little bit of a compost check um, because I've in recent years been using uh, Melcourt Silvergrow, um, which I've always got on really well with. Although last year I found I was finding it harder for it to retain moisture. So someone had recommended a... Um, it's a multi-purpose, but it is peat free from B&Q. And I thought I'd give it a go. It's the 21st of January and I'm not going to start any seed sowing yet, but I am just going to do a little bit of an experiment. So <laughs> what I just said doesn't make any sense because I am going to sow some seeds, but I'm sowing them for experimental purposes because I have got myself a bag of silver grown peat free which is what I've been using for a few years. Um, I sieve it and then sew into that. I have used the organic one or the normal one, whichever one I can get. And I just pick them up at local RHS gardens. Well, it's about half an hour away, so it's not entirely local. Um, and then I have also ordered the Silver Grow online from Mr. Fothergills, and that's actually really good. Um, you know the postage compared to driving half an hour and driving back um, but then generally if I go to the RHS I do look around the garden as well so we're going to sieve some of the silver grow there and then I've got it's very heavy it's a hundred litre bags that it comes in and it is just if I can lift it up it is the Verve so the B&Q home brand but it does say there's 100% peat free. And I looked it up online and it does seem to be made of a mixture. And some of it is, um, you know, the waste that you can get for free, sort of council waste. So hopefully there won't be anything nasty. I mean, I think it's composted really, really hot. So I wouldn't think you'd get any bindweed or anything like that in it. Um, but I, there was a recommendation of it that I saw online. Um, and I don't, you know, it's cheaper, but that's this wouldn't be why I would be changing. I I just want 
the thing that my babies are going to do best in and we all do don't we um i've got this hideous tray it's really cheap plastic i again i misread something and i thought it was going to be tough and sturdy like my outer trays because i like to reuse i very much doubt you'll get another use out of this so this is dreadful but anyway we've got it now so we will use it and we're um very simply gonna um well originally i was going to put half um silver grow and half of the verve but i am tempted actually just to do a third and a third because I'm tempted to do what I did last year because it although I didn't sew into it I put germinated seeds into it I did use straight manure last year for my um, flocks so I germinated them in the airing cupboard and then I pricked them out into not even well rotted manure we're just talking straight horse poo off the field it wasn't even rotted and actually they grew on really well so I'd be interested to see I've always avoided using it for germinating because there are so many weed seeds in there but we're in January now so what my horses are eating is really rubbish grass which doesn't have any seed on it really um, so I'm gonna I think we'll do that so I think um, I probably won't film me doing that because it's the weather is horrendous and I'm gonna have to go outside and find some manure but um I will do it all today on the same day so I'll fill a third with the it's not even manure because it doesn't have any bedding in so a third with um, horse poo straight off the paddock a third with silver grow peat free and a third with this um, B and Q I think it's a verb isn't it peat free and I'm not going to try and germinate them in my greenhouse because this is a cold greenhouse with no heating I will take them into my house I'll put them in a little mini propagator on my windowsill and because I'm going to be sowing snapdragons they like light I'm going to put them under my little LED row lights as well um, but all in the same tray so they're all under the same um, growing conditions because I want it to be a really fair representation of um, germination and then how they grow on as well which is why rather than doing them in a um, seed tray and pricking them out I want to do them in a cell tray because I really I want to see how they grow on and I don't want them to be able to spread their roots you know if I did them in a cell tray and I put a, a third a third and a third they might be able to spread their roots into the growing medium they like more I really want to do, do it so they're what growing medium they've got is what they've got to survive in and see how long before things look like they need feeding you know if we get any yellowing leaves or things from maybe contamination in the manure um, I will um, use tap water for watering the tray before I sow the seeds and my plan had been I've got my you can't see it but I'll describe it I've got a tray with tap water in which I got all ready for the video uh, clean water and then I unboxed my trees and went, oh, I need to put them in some water, they're bare root trees. So I put them in my nice clean tray of water. Um, so I probably will just do what you shouldn't do and I'll probably just water this on top with my um, watering can so I don't have to move my trees. Right, okay, I'll go ahead and sieve the compost. I'm definitely gonna sieve it, although I can't do that with the manure. Um, but I will sieve both of the compost so that they've got a fair comparison using the same sieve. Um, I'm afraid I never know what um, you know grade this is, but it, it still allows fairly chunky stuff through because I don't need it to be really, really fine. But you know, some of these peat-free composts which are made with a lot of wood, um, chicken wood bark in them, there are sometimes some still really quite big lumps in it. So this sieve manages to remove that very well. Okay, so I've just got a old plastic tray here. I think it used to be a hamster hat cage or something, you know, with a cage bit on top, but I use it for sitting my compost into, so. Um, and then I, I haven't got one of those fancy, you know, I've always wanted one, fancy compost. I don't even know what they're called for scooping your compost and mixing your compost. I've just got a like animal feed scoop. Um, but it, look, if it works, it works that's what I had available okay so that's the texture there of the B&Q 
once it's been sieved. I just will show you the texture of it before it's sieved as well. Um, and this is it before it sieves. So you see it's much coarser. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do a third, which is going to be three. And I'll just use my hands to put that in. It's amazing how much easier it goes into a tray once it's been sieved. If you try and put it into a tray with all the lumps in it, it just doesn't fill, it just doesn't fill the compartments right up. And then I think sometimes you can have like air gaps and things in there that the roots might reach. And then you don't get such good water retention. I'm just going to give it a bit of a tap. So I really want to make sure I've filled the holes right up. So there we are. And I'm going to label that right away now before I put another one in. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put the manure in. I'm not even going to label the manure because it's very obvious that it's manure because it is just, yes, it's so fresh. It's not at all rotted. And what I've done is the blue old hamster tray I was just using for compost. I've just emptied the compost out, put some water in it. And I'm just going to sit this in the water so that it can take up the water from underneath, which is what I would usually do. I'll just leave that for a couple of minutes and then we'll sow our seeds. Okay, so I've watered my tray, it's all labelled, um, and now I will go ahead and sow the seed. The experiment has shown really clearly that things will not germinate in that because they're all the same seed in the same heated propagator in the same location and you can see that none of the seeds in the horse poo germinated and to be honest it's fairly similar um, between the B&Q and the milk or silver grow but I have noticed that the silver grow does seem to be drying out more but is that because it's in the middle of the tray but I don't think it is because I don't know about you, but I find when trays start to dry out, they dry out on the outside first. So I would say the B&Q one is holding more moisture, but we will keep them in these growing mediums and I won't feed anything for a day or two and we'll see which, which of these seedlings gets away better um, in the silver grow or in the B&Q. And then that will help me decide which one I'm going to use to germinate my seeds in this year. Um, because um, it has to be peat free um, and it has to do the best for my seedlings. So we'll give it a go and we will see. Thanks very much for coming along with me today to see how I'm going to be starting my seeds. I'm not actually going to sow anything else now until mid-February. I just thought I would just do these few experiments just so that I'm ready. And it meant I had my propagators all cleaned. I had all my tags ready. I've got all my seed ready. Um, there's still time to order your seed. Um, I better not order any more, although I think I might need to order some white. But we'll see about that. Um, and anyway, for now, I will end this video and I'll see you next time. Thanks again.